thin endometrium is a pretty complex topic and uh, this is what in my practice endometrium and you can see here uh, it's a triple layer endometrium and the outcome of the procedure is going to affect us but there are multiple papers thin endometrium is everybody's delight you press a button so many papers roll out in front of you so they say that any endometrium endometrium glucose glucose or endometrium it starts building up very quickly so blood supply increases the arteries become more spiral yes estrogen is also important but the strong also comes but and hormone which builds up the endometrium till for me it merely like experiment with truth hai log kehte hain sunday ke din log aayenge hi nahi do anything people won't come i said my 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 guys will come they they will definitely come of the myometrium the lower part of the lower part of it's black area is the myometrium रिमेम्बर वन थिंग a woman's journey to the for anything it is cervix cervix is the main cause of all the problems or all good things happen to a woman coming to layers of endometrium endometrium mein kya kya hota let's see upper two third is the functionalis layer theory lower one third is the basalis layer functional layer is for implantation and the basalis layer will every month make functionalis layer functionalis layer will fall down in the periods so basalis will again make functionalis layer theory but important look at this now look at this endometrium which occurs on day 5 or sorry on day 2 to day 3 this is the when the lady is bleeding endometrium stretches around uh two sorry to four the voice yes. is getting with head movement sir okay okay two to four two to four millimeter is the endometrium on day two day three am i audible yes Madam, yes, sir, no. uh, yes sir four millimeter and then ovulation occurs we get lh lh comes when lh comes blood supply will increase LH means E2 is at the peak. LH is at the peak. BGF is at the peak, and progesterone is peaking. So this arteries will become spiral. They will go into con convolutions, and the size will increase. And endometrium will touch how much? Nearly one centimeter. This you have to understand. It's very important to understand this concept. So we have divided this into two parts. Before ovulation, before Christ, after Christ. So before Christ, we we'll say it is proliferative, and then we have secret. Proliferative means nothing much. Till this point, it is only under effect of E two. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. I can see Vidya shaking the heads. Good. <laughs> with the apv good thank you <laughs> i keep catching such screens keep popping in front of me and here is the under effect of e2 e2 lh and, and p4 just remember this just remember this okay moving ahead moving ahead this is how the layers of endometrium will look like we have myometrium and these are the vessels i'm talking about the myometrium will have Will be a which color? Quickly, which color black. is the myometrium? Black. 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 Black.
here we have the spiral arteries we have the basilar arteries uh, so we have the this is the myometrium so mark myometrium will have thick blood vessels here from which will go up the spiral arteries spiral arteries will go in the endometrium and the radial arteries are normally in the myometrium and as they become thickened more blood will come here they'll be, they look black here so when we record the endometrium this part we are not recording we are only recording from here we are recording from here to here do you understand and we are not recording in one layer we are recording two layers uterus has got two parts so both the parts come together and when they come together the center line will be formed by what where both of these uterine linings will come together junction center line there is center line so we'll have one white line we'll have one white line we have triple layer endometrium as we always talk triple layer ke andar first white line will start from here this is the first white line one <coughs> fine and the second white line will be on the other side of the uterus and where the both cavities will meet we will have the third so can you line. repeat it voice is breaking i'm i'm telling ma'am i'm telling that when we have when we the black part or the myometrium the black part is the myometrium that is never recorded you will have a black lining outside the white line that black line you never count ignore it that is part of myometrium not endometrium people normally record that also first white line is what first white line is primarily the basalis layer yes. basalis layer and then between the basalis layer you see the endometrium that is the functionalis layer and in the end you will have two functionalis layers of both the parts of uterus coming together where they both come together it will form the third thick white line i have taught you one thing in the class and i have learned from you also what is the white line what is the white junction of two whenever two organs come together kitna padte hai you what video also the first line as first line is uh, basalis basalis or basalis where basalis is coming in touch with the myometrium when the two layers of endometrium comes together they are rubbing it will become a thick white line the basic concept of white line is simple. never forget what i what we learn in the ultrasound classes gradually apply it to your daily practice these are the three lines we have the line outside the white lines is the myometrium never count that good <coughs> i want you to see this picture once <coughs> please look at this picture <coughs> myometrium stratum basalis and stratum i'm taking you back to your school days endometrium has got two parts basalis and functionalis basalis is the permanent part it never goes bad functionalis is shut down every month pathological endometrium means what when the basalis is damaged if basalis damage ho then nothing much can be done when functionalis is damaged and what can damage the functionalis layer can someone tell me hormonal milieu infection hormonal changes hormone hormone whenever basalis goes bad tuberculosis dnc tuberculosis etc tuberculosis dnc tuberculosis when the basalis goes bad now nothing much can be ashman syndrome perfectly fine you have answered all that when basalis goes bad nothing much can be done then we keep doing scratching we are put put prps somebody is writing on my screen beautiful somebody is making those beautiful black black diagrams on my screen good shivali kya ho raha hai shivali is doing basti <laughs> so 
So we can remove this. I'll try to remove this if you permit me. I've learned how to remove these things now. Yes, good. Good. No one compliments me. Good. So endometrial role in implantation. So there is a crosstalk always occurring between the embryo and the receptive endometrium. This we already know. Any endometrium with bacillus is gone. Nothing much can be done. You put some people put HCG there, some put PRP there. We have some people put uh, GCSF there. Some people doing scratching. Some do hysteroscopy and scratching. Nothing much can be done. Yes, things can be done, but they are all experimental. So most important part for for pregnancy is not only. the bacillus part and functionalis part but if functioning functionalis functionalis is there but not functioning what will happen due to early endometritis implantation won't occur the glands are bad there so we have to have a functioning functionalis so endometrium baby will implant in the functionalis layer when it has got receptors so many times you get very good endometrium but not implanting what do we carry out there what type of test we can do there era test era test beautiful era test can be done good so these 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 may things occur when we are have to trying to have something implanted so we'll have you know initially they have some additions then they have they have opposition then they have um, initially they have the rolling We have the rolling blasts. So yeah, rolling yeah. blast, rolling blast comes around day five, yeah. and then it'll oppose, oppose, and finally it will go inside. That's the way. And there are neutrophils, macrophages. They encourage the addition. So this is what I want to tell you. So these are the markers of endometrial receptivity. So the best markers of endometrial receptivity is an ultrasound. I remember this. The best marker for you. Is which I do in day nine in all the patients, or because I, my clientele is all two three failures. I hardly get a fresh patient with me. So two three IVF failures is the minimum. Two IVF failures is the minimum which I get in my opening. So I go out of the way. I do carry out on day nine a three D color Doppler. Color Doppler is for the zoning of endometrial, and three D is for volume. So volume should be more than two cc. This is good for us, and we'll have. Zone three or zone four blood cell. This is what we always follow. And minimum seven millimeter endometrium for FET, and eight millimeter for fresh is what we count. But in case you are take my question, my answer minimum eight millimeter. Minimum eight millimeter. This is a guru mantra. Eight millimeter with zone. Three vascularity with appropriate RI and PI of the spiral arteries. This is beyond the purview of the lecture today. I won't talk about. Okay, no problem. So, what volume is this that you're talking about? Two. The uh, you train cavity volume. Yeah. You train cavity on three D ultrasound. Yeah, three D ultrasound. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Three D ultrasound. And this volume of the entire uterine, the entire endometrial cavity. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So this will also tell us about the receptivity. To some extent, yes. In case cavity volume is small, something is small. Something is wrong there. Minimal accepted volume of the uterus is two cc. Okay. So always when you are doing, uh, looking at your query, I think you are not doing it. Please start doing. In case you are dealing with high risk cases, start doing cavity volume. That's very important. Okay. You also do color Doppler. When the endometrium has become seven to eight millimeter on day nine, and the follicle is twenty millimeter, that's the day I do color doppler. Okay. When the okay. Endo, when the follicle is twenty millimeter, only then you do the ultrasound. Otherwise, you do day nine. का कोई meaning नहीं है. Day ten का कोई meaning नहीं है. Day ten पे scan करा कर आ जाओ. Day eleven पे scan करा लो. That is wrong. When the day nine, day ten is just correlating, but the follicle size should be around how much? Around eighteen to twenty millimeter. Only then these things will work. On the day of the procedure, we can do it. Then uh, yeah, say... absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Up to you. But follicle should be twenty millimeter. Twenty millimeter. Twenty millimeter. Right. Okay. I'm just giving you some tips. Yeah. 
some tips. Normally, for an ultrasound, up day nine, you order for an ultrasound, and patient spends rupees five thousand, approximately, and her follicle size is only fourteen millimeter. Follicles have not grown, and you are getting values of RI PI are low, and you're getting cavity volume is two cc, and endometrium is six millimeter. The sonologist has scared the person. All values are normal. He doesn't know what he is writing. Patient goes on the internet, looks at the RIPI values. Oh my God, the soles. He looks at the looks at the endometrial thickness. Oh my God, six millimeter. He collapses. So they have to be correlated. In the food, when you make heavier food, in case you don't put salt in your food, food you can't eat in the long run. Or in the pudding, in case you don't add sugar, you can't eat that pudding in the long run. Once in a while, it's okay. So adding sugar and salt is twenty millimeter follicle size is the sugar and salt. Remember, if you don't have anything else, Anjali, I'll come back to you after. Uh, just uh, um, Akriti, note Anjali has got raised hand. I'll come back to her after. I've taken few more slides. Yes, yes, sir. <clears throat> so uh, Anjali, we have recorded your raised hands. Okay. So we have low implantation rates, repeated implantation failures, early abortions. More, it can be uh, hindered invasion can be there. So the patients can come with amenorrhea, hypomenorrhea, and English. It's all English. We all know. Endometrial vascularity. There are four zones. Again, it's English. I won't go to this. You can always read it from the books. But you should know that zone three and four is the vascularity we are looking. So minimal. In case you do this cavity, we should get blood supply till somewhere here. Minimum. This is zone three. You get blood supply here. यहाँ पे blood supply नहीं आ रहा है. Ideal is in the mid cavity also. In case you don't get this picture, don't carry out your embryo transfer. I don't do it. So this what is the ideal day for this scoring? Like the zonal you doppler scoring. You tell me. You tell me. Again, the day of the trigger or yes. I, no, trigger फॉलिकल साइज इज नॉट ट्वेंटी मिलीमीटर और मिनिमम एटीन नाइनटीन मिलीमीटर दे आर यूजलेस नो यूज यू आर वेस्टिंग देअर टाइम यू आर वेस्टिंग आर टाइम and we are wasting their money and we are losing our money because they'll definitely meet somebody like me some day i will tell them what nonsense has been done with you they will lose a client ha sir ye wahan pe rakh de jahan pe wo 20 mm pe kaam karne hai aapko wo jagah hai wahan pe dr aastha thank you so much for explaining yes aastha bhai yes. aastha 20 mm yeah. is the cut off yes sir thank you yeah okay yeah doppler sonography of the uterine and subendometrial blood flow and this is what i have told you must do it must do it in case you want this jump off 2 mm or 3 mm i get yes, normally four yes. four failures five failures i keep cancelling my fts for 3 to 4 months patients are cursing me many of them they leave me out of 10 two will leave me and go to some other doctor let them go with their embryo lying with me but rest eight who are with me all it will become pregnant because we have to follow these things these are very important things investigation of thin endometrium kya karna chahiye ek chhota ek kare udhar maine do hysteroscopy do 3d color doppler this is what we have to do don't carry out please don't carry out those biopsies and everything they are not relevant yes tb pc endometrium you can do nothing wrong in it to rule out tuberculosis causes of thin endometrium are iatrogenic is english i won't spend much much of time here TB we know it. Low levels of E2 obviously fine in case woman is menopausal or the woman is on uh, prolonged OC pills. The woman is on hormones. The woman has is hypo hypo. She'll have this. Uh, what is hypo hypo by the way? What grade of WHO classification? Class one. Grade one. Class one. Class one. Class one. What is class one? What is class five? Class, class five. Uterine causes. Uterine causes. Uterine causes. And all, and all, and that is your transport. So it is. 
knows everything. कितना कितना कैसे आता है इन लोगों को यार आपने वीडियो बंद कर दो सबके अभी सो वेरी नाइस वेरी नाइस आई एम सो प्राउड ऑफ यू दिस ऑल सिंपल थिंग्स बेसिक थिंग्स इनएडिक्यूट ब्लड फ्लो आई हैव टोल्ड यू अब इनएडिक्यूट ब्लड फ्लो कैन बी ड्यू टू द ब्लड फ्लो बैड फ्रॉम बिहाइंड नो ब्लड नहीं आ रहा है द ब्लड फ्लो फ्रॉम बिहाइंड इज बैड देन इट विल बेनिफिट बाय व्हाट आर्जिनिन इट विल वर्क विद आर्जिनिन it will work with sildenafil but in case of blood sap blood sap see what you, what you have to know is there is something called ripi ripi means there can be something happening where blood is not coming in the endometrium at all aur ab endometrium mein estrogen diye ja rahe hain ab gcs se diye ja rahe hain kurej rahe hain people leke you you are trying to plow the field in the endometrium but it work it won't work why because blood is not coming from behind usko lane ke liye you have to dilate the uterine artery like what happens in in the men we give them sildenafil or tadalafil to increase the to inhibit the fall 5 phospho is phase inhibitors 5pd inhibitors so we have to increase the blood supply and how do you increase the blood supply by arginine sildenafil using basically nitric oxide donors तो यहाँ पे पीआरपी कैसे काम करेगा पीआरपी काम ही नहीं करेगा सो यू टू क्लासिफाई योर प्रॉब्लम दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट समबडी इज गॉट पीसीओ देर इज हाइपर एंड्रोजिनीमिया एंड यू टेंट टू पीआरपी विल इट वर्क इट वॉन्ट वर्क यू हैव टू करेक्ट द मिल यू सो दिस इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दैट डोंट लुक एट दीटी लुक एट समबडी वेरी फ्लमली सेंग आई डो पी आर पी इन एवरी पेशेंट आई डो जी एस एफ इन एवरी पेशेंट आई डोंट थिंक इट्स एक्चुअली वर्थ सो बी केयरफुल बिफोर पिकिंग अप द थिंग एटलीस्ट टिल द टाइम यू आर विथ इन आर पाठशाला एंड वी आर लर्निंग टूगेदर वी शूड डू इट so so the you're seeing the blood supply coming from behind you mean the systemic causes yeah systemic causes it's not only systemic causes it is the vascular causes like uh, they, there is something in the body which is not allowing the blood to flow to the arteries see what happens to the penile arteries when the blood is not there due to some reason what can be the cause sometimes idiopathic sometimes you know the cause but when you give the man uh, some sort of stimulation with we had a class two classes on male sexuality you give him sildenafil or tadalafil or depoxetin they find that blood increases and he gets better erections same way the blood the blood blood goes in there no blood flows here also the blood is not flowing properly why is it not flowing properly it can be diabetes it can be hypertension it may be iatrogenic it may be psychological it may be body's response of not sending the blood in the uterine cavity so here we have to give them how do we come to know that by doing a 3d scan 3d scan will and color doppler will tell you that follicle has become ready follicle works under effect of e2 but blood supply is not coming there because ra pi is having low values they are having very high values their pulsatility index is very high resistivity index is very high to fir aap usko why do you want to give them uh, prp and gcsf mm, so, yes sir so try yeah. to move ahead that's what i tell you i'm trying, 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 trying to tell you guys think before you jump into new new technologies ek fad ban gaya hai 60000 ka era karenge एंडोमीटर नहीं बन रहा इरा कर दो वॉट विल इरा गिव यू विद योर पी आई आर आई टचिंग पॉइंट नाइन और वन एंड यू वॉन्ट इरा हाउ विल इट वर्क Yeah. So we have altered your uterine cavity. The cavity may be bad due to there are some certain things lying in that. English again, I'm not going to talk about this. Endometritis, I won't talk about this. Thrombophilias, you know all know. Altered microbiota is a full subject in itself. This again is a good subject, but I don't do it myself. So I I I plead my ignorance here, and I won't talk about this. But you must read about this topic. we don't have such tests in our country available freely and i and i don't do such uh, microbial uh, microbial uh, 
the, the scanning of the microbials, microbials I don't do. So now look here. Summary statement. Quality of evidence is weak, but good evidence. It says Asherman, uterine surgery, infection, radiation uh, can lead to thin. So you must know why is the endometrium thin before you start treating it. But three important factors which will lead to good endometrium are these three in a healthy person. But in case the bacillus we have eroded, then nothing can be done. Otherwise, these three things are there. We have already spoken about them. Okay. Moving ahead. Thin endometrium and ovarian stimulation, non-IVF cycles. Here again, this non-IVF cycles means probably letter of Moxifen with HMG, without HMG. There is no, no data at all. Nobody knows what is happening. But yes, in case you get stuck, when everything looks fine, our friend is Temoxifen. So Temoxifen has to be given from day two to day six. Exactly. Same thing like IUI cycle. Same. But Temoxifen will work like coffee. Again, coffee. Or adenosine. It will act more centrally. So this would no read about tamoxifen. I'll stop here. Tamoxifen use kar lijiega. IVF fresh or frozen embryo transfer cycle in th when, when, when thin endometrium in IVF it is rare, not very common. Until it's pathological, it is not. A pathological in case an injury, then nothing can be done. Otherwise, it is very rare in IVF cycles. And there is no way we can actually improve it. And there is not much of data. Now, the adjuvants for thin endometrium. Treatment recommendations. So here, in very simplistic terms, I'm going to say that there is no validation till now. No validation till now. Remember this. Everywhere, there is insufficient evidence. Why is it insufficient evidence? Because none of us are doing proper studies. We are not establishing the cause of cause of bad endometrial. We are trying to find out does GCSF work? Does PRP work? Does scratching work? Does putting bone marrow stem cells work? But we are not trying to find out the cause of thin endometrial. As a result, all the studies, they become without any meaning because uh, they have la large amount of gaps in the studies. So they are not accepted by Cochrane. So can't we, we give tamoxifen here? You can. You, the tamoxifen you give anywhere. I'm not saying you can't give tamoxifen. Tamoxifen you give, give everywhere. But I want you to have a broader broader perspective of thin Okay. And let's see the evidence. I'm now coming back to from where I've started. One hour back. Eight millimeter number you remember, never forget. Seven millimeter number you never forget. Cancel and, and do cryo activity. This is one take-home message I'm giving you. Then there are multiple things which are there. We'll see one of one, every one, one by one, and see uh, what is good for us. Hysteroscopy is fantastic. Always do it. When we have thin ED, do hysteroscopy. But non, but not in a PCO patient. A PCO patient method, you have to remove androgens. Then it'll come up. But other cases, do hysteroscopy. Nothing wrong. That's the only time when I say do hysteroscopy. Otherwise, I say don't do hysteroscopy in IPA. Hysteroscopy is sort of a contraindication. Don't do it as a routine. You'll, you'll cause more damage with hysteroscopy in case you do it. But indicated, you have to do. So here it is indicated. Treat endometritis. In case we have any doubts, treat endometritis. But there is no way we can diagnose endometritis. We can diagnose it. But then do you let any woman who comes to you go without doxy and teniba or augmentin? I'll, I'll ask all of the uh, girls present here. Girls and boys. Do you do every patient? So, yes. Khata, khata. Dete, so, dete. doxy we do, but what is teniba? Did you say teniba? Teniba. Oh, teniba. Teniba. That is what we are giving. Okay, okay. We're all giving. We're all giving. Yes, so, yes, yes. So, so this is not the role. Sir, intrauterine antibiotic, what you are giving and how? No, no, we, no, I'm not giving intrauterine antibiotics. Okay. I'm just saying oral antibiotics. Okay. Oral and, and do you uh, give oral antibiotics before transfer? No, we start from second day of the period. I start from second day of the period for seven days. Like. 
And what no. about prebiotic, probiotic, sir? Nothing. We are not giving any prebiotic, probiotic. We no, in the cycle you are planning transfer. In the same cycle. Same cycle. You can easily give it till 10 days. You but give it no, you days. give it along with the stimulation or in the FET cycle? FET cycle. Oh. No, okay. in stimulation, we always give only. In stimulation, we give it, both the cases we give for seven days. Because in stimulation also, uh, we don't know what type of infection she's carrying, no? So we normally give doxyteneba or augmentin to all the people. We always give blindly. No, but... Hmm. When the stimulation, like from second day, or you give it before in the pre second day, cycle? Second, second day, second day, before okay. nitrogen, second day. So we give on second day. Doesn't interfere with the follicular. Uh, so, okay. even okay. if patient. But isn't it so then it is given in the prior 18,000 cycles. 18,000 cycles, every success rate is around 54%. Average. Doesn't, okay. doesn't make any difference. We all give. In so you days them. or 14 days? 10 days. Give it only. Every days. cycle you give, sir? Yes. Every cycle you give this antibiotic? Only yeah, yeah. Whenever. See, we don't do cycles back to back also. No? Whenever we do a cycle, we do give antibiotic. I feel Even sorry. the simple ovulation. So the dose of Tiniba. Tiniba is uh, the 1 BD. But Tiniba doxy 1 BD. Standard. Tiniba is all 1 BD. And, uh, 500 milligrams. Yeah, yeah. Is it only for IVF cycles or uh, the normal IUI? IUI, IUI, we don't give it. IUI can that we don't give any. IUI only for IUI. Only for IUI. <laughs> so if you can operate, no, NSCC out there. It's always good to have the patient covered up. Because vaginal flora may be infected. Uh, she may be having any. See, we don't do PSPB in every patient. Vagina may be infected. And when you put a needle, the vaginal flora may go inside the abdom abdomen and cause problem. Just giving it is... Uh, some things are empirical, we are giving. Uh, majority of people give us. So, I wanted to say to you was that in our country, leave aside this problem, but any woman coming to you for anything, she will take antibiotics. So, and endometritis will be treated in every woman. In Europe, they have to confirm endometritis. Only then they give it. They can't write antibiotics to any woman. But Marato, we give to uh, nearly every woman in our country for any, any indication. So uh, that doesn't hold any much of uh, logic in our country uh, to give doxy to anyone because all of them are already getting it or augmenting. They're getting it all. Role of estrogen to make the endometrial thickness grow? Yes, estrogens can grow. And estrogens are normally we are using oral and transdermal. We use it for endometrial preparation. I'm not going to go into the details here. This you already know. And uh, I just want to tell you that how does E2 work? E2 basically works by uh, causing proliferation of the functionalist layer spiral arteries. And it will improve the blastocyst and endometrial crosstalk. So it will support proliferation. Endometrium will normally give in an FPT cycle. And we normally get 70 to 80%, I'll say nearly 90% of cases, we get good response response with Progenova or Estrabet. Sub so, different, different policies. Hai. This we cover in our embryo transfer in our classes is not meant for, but I everyone goes the different methods. But just remember that we normally give it for around 10 days minimum. And on average, I'll say around, we give it for around 14 days before we start their FPT cycle, before we do their implantation. So 10 to 14 days is the average it takes to build up the endometrium in a woman. We give on average uh, around 6 to 8 milligrams per day. The protocols can differ. I'm go not going to talk about them here. It's not part of the lecture today. And you can give it till around, easily till around 3 weeks. In case there's a delayed, delayed endometrial proliferation, 3 weeks you can give. Safely. Role of low-dose aspirin we are giving it, but it is not actually recommended we are giving it. It doesn't have much of role. But yes, once you look at the role of the low-dose uh, aspirin, it says that they, they uh, one sec, I just want to remove somebody's writing on my screen again. Okay. You're fine. So it will increase the blood supply and it will enhance implantation. So absolutely fine. You can give it, but it is empirical. It is not to be given in every patient and it is inconsistent. This is about the aspirin. 
सेवेंटी फाइव मिलीग्राम में इज वॉट वी आर गिविंग सम पीपल गो टू द डोज ऑफ वन फिफ्टी मिलीग्राम बट सेवेंटी फाइव वन से डे इज वॉट बींग रिकमेंडेड शुड नॉट बी रूटीनली रिकमेंड दिस इज वॉट आर दी गाइडलाइंस फ्रॉम द कैनेडियन गाइडलाइंस पेंटॉक्सीफाइलिन एंड विटामिन ई कॉम्बिनेशन पेंटॉक्सीफाइलिन एट हंड्रेड विटामिन ई वन वन थाउजेंड यूनिट्स नाइन मंथस एंड इट इज बेसिकली टू इन इम्प्रूव कॉज वैसो डायलिटेशन एंड विटामिन ई इज एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट एंड इट इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इन रेडिएशन इंड्यूस्ड फाइब्रोसिस रिमेंबर समर इज गॉट ए रेडिएशन इंड्यूस्ड फाइब्रोसिसन एंड एंड विटामिन ई आर ड्रग्स ऑफ चॉइस Just remember this this part. But so it says six to nine months. So we wait for them to we give them pentoxyphalin <laughs> and vitamin E for six to nine months, and then we do their cycles. Yes, yeah. yeah. In case the endometrium is not growing, what do you do? Okay. There is okay. no other way. No, we have to wait. <laughs> Great. Role of L-arginine. Pretty conflicting. We are using arginine like water. Arginine is orange flavor, it's mango flavor. Okay. Arginine. We are Come giving. I am using my blood. Arginine. Yes, arginine is coming in different flavors. We have sugar-free arginine coming. Normally, we are giving we are giving six grams of arginine to the patient, uh, approximately. Uh, but I am not going to talk about this today. We have already covered this lecture some time back. It's a nitric oxide donor. This you remember, and it's a wonderful drug. So, in case you want me to rate the drugs, arginine is pretty good. Must give arginine. <laughs> कैसे आते हैं गिफ्ट पीपल रोल ऑफ रोल ऑफ द डेटा इज स्टिल लैकिंग डेटा इज स्टिल लैकिंग कमिंग टू वन ऑफ द लास्ट फ्यू स्लाइड्स नाउ रोल ऑफ सिल्डेनाफिल फाइव फॉस्फोर्ड आइसरेज इनिबिटर्स एंड इट लीड टू रिलैक्सेशन ऑफ द ब्लड वेसल्स इन द मैन वी यूज इट फॉर इरेक्टाइल डिस्फंक्शन एंड द वुमेन वी गिव इट टू इंक्रीज you improve you try and spiral artery just remember uh, you can give you can use it people are using it yeah. it's a vasodilator but evidence is insufficient this is what i want to tell you but we are using it role of hcg hcg is normally been given intramuscular there are only three four papers i could find on the internet nice papers three four papers are there but it's been quoted by the canadian guidelines also and it has worked in some people but overall they say more control studies are required role of mid luteal gnrh agonist give one dose of dacapeptide or lupride they can increase the blood supply by leading to causing an lh surge but results have not been replicated So mid-cycle drug is not recommended. GCSF factor, it is again a pretty in thing nowadays. GCSF we are using quite a lot, but there has to be an indication, and it is to be given. It improves ET in patients with thin endometrium, especially when it is due to destruction of the endothelial layer and where other treatments of vasodilation have failed. So when we feel that there is endometritis, endometritis or the damage to the basalis, here this thing can work. So this is an indication of using GCS. So keep this thing in your mind. Take home message. It is available available as a three hundred micrograms vial. It normally we use an IUA cannula and we normally put it put it in intrauterine. But here the procedure I'm not again going into because this you this you all know you can read it. Uh, but GCSF indication I've told you where you can do it. So, but looking at the Cochrane review which came this year only, uh, 2020 it came. It says that it may improve low quality evidence. It may improve clinical pregnancy rate, but it is still unclear. We are not we don't know what we have to do. It is not. Uh, we can do it but we still it's low quality evidence this is what they have said yes yes endometrial scratching by doing using a pipil smear or using a histoscope we just do some scratching scratching will create reaction uh, the endometrium can improve and this has to be done one cycle prior and all these things 
dendritic cells, natural killer cells. Uh, it it will improve cause cytokine growth factors, resulting in successful implantation. So this may some may somehow increase the chance of embryo implanting. This can be done definitely. It's not a very difficult procedure. Um, but here, remember that we only scratch the superficial layer. So don't go to the bacillus and start doing a DNC like MTB like we should do before and led to formation of additions. Very gently, just do it. And uh, it should be only be done in the luteal phase. If done in the follicular phase of the cycle, it is of no benefit. Just remember this. Then they have said that there is few control trials. They suggest benefit from endometrial scratching. So there are few papers in RIF and abortions which they have said. And now I come to platelet-rich plasma. PRP is the new kid in the town. Everybody is using PRP on the skin. They are using in the joints. They are using every part of the body. People are putting PRPs now. So PRPs, they contain growth factors. And the best way of PRP is that you remove, take platelets, then you freeze thaw them so that they release all these factors and then you implant them. So avoid putting PRPs directly, freeze thaw. They give you better outcome of the PRP. So PRP is one thing which is, it is debatable. And how to do it, I will invite Dr. Surekan to come and speak about this. But it's a debatable thing. Uh, but he's going to tell you how to do use PRP. So we are using the lower layer of the PRP after we have done the after we have done the centrifuge. So this PRP is rich source of uh, leuke, um, uh, interleukin cytokines, and it works very well. To conclude, to conclude, against the use of Weak evidence against the use of aspirin. Luteal phase is said all to improve pregnancy rate. Against weak the evidence. use. Weak evidence. Weak evidence. I'm just telling you now what all things people are doing. <laughs> Sildenafil, insufficient evidence. Insufficient. So weak evidence. Insufficient. GCSF, against the use. Against the use. No weak evidence. Needs to be further studies, studied. HCG, pentoxyphalin, GNRH, PRP, stem cell are mm -hmm. against, against. No control studies. This is the latest article which we have. So I just wanted to GNRH take you through. Agonist, sorry, sorry, just interfering. So GNRH yes. agonist, have you used? Have you seen any results? Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How is that I, I, I used to use it quite often. Uh, just give one shot on day of uh, uh, OPU. And once we're doing fresh embryo transfer, so normally it brings out the LH surge. And it's, we used to give, actually we were giving 0 0.1 milligram, uh, 0 0.1 milligram of decapeptide. We, we used to give it on the day of trigger and repeat every six days initially. But it came in a big way. But sir, if, the, if on the day of the trigger, we are giving the GNRH agonist as well, wouldn't it, because wouldn't it, like, are we giving a dual... But, but, so, uh, along with the trigger, sir, we give yeah. for the endometrium line. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't interfere with the ovulation. <laughs> Sorry, aapki awaaz chali gai, sir. We were giving two to two to three doses of this on consecutive days. Yeah, uh, oh no, after a gap of six days or five to six days, we were doing initially when it came, but it doesn't work out. Now I can it's against. Now you stop using. We stopped. Okay, okay. We, stopped. we don't use it anymore. Okay, so it's not recommended now. Like, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Against the use, no control okay. studies. Okay. Right. Right. You train cavity assessment by hysteroscopy. Should be done. I feel we should do it. Now, look at the guidelines of HFEA. HFEA says endometrial scratching is amber. Amber means it should be taken with a pinch of salt. Uh, don't do it in every patient until we have good. There is a conflicting body of evidence. They have covered that, but they have st they still don't talk about. So which day should we do endometrial sketching? Uh, day twenty-one of the previous cycle. Okay. One cycle Thank prior. Thank you. Okay, and I think that's it. Uh, it's all English. English. Sab pata hai. Next curtain regular is on next Sunday. I think so. Thirtieth. 
is an incubator that's going to be exciting talk for nearly everyone because all will buy incubator one day then we have one on fertility preservation then we have one on semen analysis this was pending uh, dates have written here uh, resonance wala addition aap ek bar jab dekh lijiyega it would have already gone in your think and uh, next resonance is on thin endometrium then we have one on chlamydia and that's it i'm going to stop sharing my screen here i'll invite dr surekant to start sharing his screen screen and talk about uh, and talk about uh, prp and before this uh, akriti akriti can so put our telephone numbers akriti please put our telephone numbers in the chat box again uh, many times you can't take all the questions so please uh, go to the chat box and uh, uh, take our numbers and you can write to our uh, write to us directly also just number 1 and also here i like to tell you that please go to linkedin and download the new resonance edition thank you so much i am here but i'll invite dr surekant to speak on prp sir all yours uh, can i ask yes, one question थेरापी uh basically prp is now coming up as a most modern therapy uh, and as a boon for can you hear my uh, my voice we can we can mere ko ek doi page bak ke hello we can hear sir we can hear yeah. so prp has come out as a uh, big therapy now for rejuvenation and restoration of uh, functions in any of uh, many parts of the body and the benefits of prp have been found as healing of musculoskeletal diseases repair of nerve damage repair of muscle damage bone repair plastic and cosmetic surgery oral surgery wound care hair regrowth facial rejuvenation dry eye syndrome and thin endometrium all of these have been tried and they uh, people have found various successes variable success in these areas and uh, now we are talking about the use of prp in thin endometrium we can use also in ovarian regeneration and premature menopause we can use it o shot p shot and vibar repair so prp finds uses in many uh, disciplines of the medicine and scientists have used prp in treating various diseases which require rapid repair and restoration of the function uh, the most important first evidence which came up for the endometrium was the biological effect of plasma rich growth factors for endometrial fibroblasts they have found that fibroblasts immediately go into proliferation after the prp is injected into endometrial cavity so after this it started working for uh, uh, with the premise that it will uh, restore the endometrial function and people have started using prp uh, in various uh, forms for the thin endometrium so proper endometrium as you know is one of the most important factors in pregnancy achieving in the assisted reproductive techniques estrogen low dose aspirin gcsf have all been variously tried the first uh, evidence came from the china where autologous platelet rich plasma promoted endometrial growth and improved pregnancy rates during in vitro fertilization this is a very short article which had eight cases and all of them became pregnant after giving uh, endometrial prp so intrauterine infusion of prp is used in endometrium with view that the growth factors which are provided in the platelets uh, will help in restoring the deficient endometrial function prp is prepared from 15 ml blood using double centrifugation technique and the final preparation of 0.5 ml which is 30x concentration of platelets is is infused on day 10 and day 13th of the cycle patients can be selected on the criteria of previous cycle showing endometrial development of less than 7 mm even after other therapies so uh, these are different uh, oh no why different uh, articles which have appeared in the um, uh, literature uh, which shows very good promise of uh, thin endometrium prp therapy methods uh, using uh, uh, thin uh, thin endometrium and other uh, uh, diseases are like chronic endometritis and endometriosis causing inflammatory process uh, prp also can give as anti inflammatory effect and cell proliferation effect and prp increases progesterone receptor activity in the endometrium 
Similarly, we can use PRP in early endo ovarian failures, uh, which is a baffling problem, which is not treatable very easily. Early menopause with increased anti, uh, uh, decrease in antimullerian activity is a challenge in infertility management. So PRP application in ovarian soft tissue aims at cellular growth and proliferation in the ovaries. Uh, pu published series of eight perimenopausal women showed return of ovarian activity in three months. Based on known uh, and predictable endothelial and vascular growth factor activity of PRP application uh, and stimulation of uh, stem cells results are expected even in recent menopausal we can do a scientific study in almost all these cases of laparoscopy and proper PRP can be prepared before laparoscopy and injected during the ovarian observation using the follicle aspiration needle, uh, which is used for in IVF for the harvesting of ova. Uh, what is PRP? Basically, platelets are ubiquitous tiny blood cells derived from megakaryocytes in the bone marrow. They, have, they don't have any nucleus. They are 2 to 3 micron in size and contain dense granules and alpha, alpha granules. And uh, they have uh, gro growth factors which help in tissue regeneration, angiogenesis, epithelialization, proliferation and differentiation of osteoblasts, synthesis of collagen. And these are the various factors which are available in the platelets. That is EGF, that is endometrial epithelial growth factor. PDGF is platelet-derived growth factor. IGF, insulin-like growth factor. BEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, which is very important in the endometrium. Uh, keratinocyte growth factor, fibroblast growth factor is another one which is very important, connective tissue growth factor, and various interleukins are present in the <coughs> platelet derived growth factors. Now, the method of preparation. The, this is very, very important because we have to achieve proper concentration of platelet growth factors and there should be a release of growth factors also. This first uh, part is the uh, first centrifugation where you separate plasma and platelets from the RBCs. And in second play, uh, uh, picture, you can see a platelet pellet at the bottom, which is a very good pellet, which is derived from 15 ml plasma, that is 30 ml blood. This is how it is prepared. After this first centrifugation, we have to separate the plasma uh, very carefully without taking the uh, RBCs. Most of the platelets are present suspended in the uh, plasma itself. After the plasma is separated, uh, we centrifuge again and after centrifugation, you can see a very good pellet at the bottom, which is platelets. So what we do is we remove all the plasma, leaving behind 1 ml at the bottom. This remaining 1 ml, in, in that 1 ml, we resuspend the platelets. Uh, we get, roughly get about 20 to 30 X concentration of platelets compared to the blood. And in that particular plasma, we resuspend these uh, platelets. And after this uh, resuspension, we have to subject this plasma with platelets to three steps of uh, freeze thaw. Uh, this is done in, by using liquid nitrogen. Freeze thaw is very, very important because platelets will contain all the uh, factors which are present in the uh, PRP will contain all the uh, platelets which will have all the growth factors, but they are inside the platelets. You need to bring them out into a solution for which we require to do three steps of uh, freeze thaw after the freeze thaw all the growth factors will come into the solution then this uh, plasma 0.5 ml which is which can go into the endometrial cavity is to be infused by using just an iui cannula you go beyond the internal os and uh, infuse it slowly into the endometrial cavity it will go all over the endometrial cavity and these growth factors when they are released in the endometrial cavity will be very readily observed absorbed into the endometrial uh, cells and they will start stimulating the cells and will, will lead to the growth of the endometrial, um, endometrial uh, um, uh, tissues. Now, what is important here is these growth factors, which being a complete cocktail of factors, will uh, stimulate in each and every part of the endometrial uh, tissue, uh, the um, connective tissue, the vessels, the, ves uh, the uh, endometrial uh, glands and everything is stimulated and you, you can get a good restoration of the function. Now it has to be done on the 9th and uh, 12th day or 10th and 13th day of the cycle uh, in which you are going to do the transfer and the endometrial growth will definitely be restored and will, will lead to a very good uh, implantation rate also.
थैंक यू वेरी मच एक्सक्यूज मी सर यस सर देर इज अ क्वेश्चन हाउ डू यू परफॉर्म फ्रीज थॉप आई मीन यू एड एनी क्रायो प्रोटेक्टेंट और यू जस्ट कोट इट इन नाइट्रोजन एंड ब्रिंग इट बैक when you when you take the test tube the final one ml is prepared you just dip that tip into the liquid nitrogen con, uh, taken in a thermocol container just for 15 to 20 seconds it will freeze completely solidly then you take it out roll it in a palm and you can uh, thaw it so you can com- continue doing three cycles like that फ्रोजन फॉर्म Which you can huh. thaw again on thirteenth, twelfth, or thirteenth day and uh, re-infuse. So twice in cycle would be very uh, ideal. Okay. What okay. is the centrifugation rate and timing used? Yes, centrifugation rate for the first centrifugation is fifteen hundred RPM. Second is three thousand RPM. Fifteen hundred for how many minutes? Fifteen minutes each. And three thousand. It is all optimized with uh, by the uh, use of Remy R eight C or R eight C plus centrifuge. And the kit which I have uh, uh, launched and uh, 15 ml tubes. So uh, these all these factors are true for 15 ml tubes. Yes, and uh, the so freeze part, part like the normal freeze thaw that we do for the IVF. Yeah, it's it's in liquid nitrogen only. So, but you said three times. So you freeze it, thaw it at the same day or how? Same time, same time. It takes only five minutes to complete three cycles of freeze thaw. You said that we can keep it in freezer and again use it. That is remaining half. See, first half uh, ml you infuse on that day, and second half you can keep for the uh, uh, three days later. Okay. Uh, sir, sir, for uh, how many minutes uh, how... we have to thaw that? Point Excuse is me, about uh, a minute or two maximum. It depends. You can see. You can see it. You can see the that it is. Uh, between the two palms only. Yes, yes. You can just roll it in the palm like this. Okay. So, for the premature ovarian failure, like you shared, that you, there have been some few perimenopausal patients or some uh, of uh, marginal. So, how have how, how have the results been, and where did you infuse it into the ovaries, or how did you like laparoscopically you went, sir? How did you do it? If you can share for ovary. Yeah, like you share for the ovary. For ovary, you can you can either do laparoscopic, which is uh, which is uh, for any other reason you have done, you can you can do it at that time, or you can do just like uh, collecting the ova. You go transvaginal, same way you can trans- infuse into the ovaries. So into in the, the ovary also, point five ml is injected. Point five ml in each ovary. In each okay. ovary, you can put each, that at the same time in both ovaries. We can put point five ml. Yes, yes, point five yes, ml. Of course. Of course, point five uh, million, one point five million. And so, what million. kind of results have you like? Have there been good results uh, of oh, this? Ovary, I won't happen? know much about because there are very few people who have used it. I am a pathologist, now, so I am not doing it myself. I only teach okay. people to how to pro- perform the procedures uh, that way. Uh, But for any, endometrium, results have been very good. Paper on uh, the use of uh, PRP in uterus. Yeah, I can, I can, I can share a few papers with uh, to you. Uh, just how send me a WhatsApp cost, message. Uh, how much is the cost of this procedure? Ma'am, that's a commercial question. It's very, very inexpensive, <laughs> I must say. So, okay, can sir, you sir, please send me the WhatsApp number on the chat, if possible? Uh, I think Dr. Pankaj sir will will be able to share it. Okay, okay, sir. So love you, love you. Yeah, hey, one thing I like to say, like for injecting into ovaries, like it is very difficult to inject into unstimulated ovaries by vaginal route by transvaginal. So if you want to inject PRP, you have to slightly like stimulate the ovaries by giving them HMG. Stimulated ovaries become a slight become slightly larger, better visible, and then it is possible to like inject PRP into them. Yes, I think that difficulty would come only when you are going to do transvaginally. But if you are doing uh, at the time of laparoscopy, I think that would be much. Yes, easier. laparoscopic is easy, but how many times can we do it? So better is transvaginal in stimulated ovaries. I understand, ma'am. That's that's absolutely a clinical uh, acumen. 
could you share Can you please repeat how how do do we we uh, use the the platelet pellet once we get the pellet uh, how do we once get once you get the pellet you have to remove the top plasma and uh, keep the uh, the required plasma at the bottom and in that plasma you have to resuspend by using the pipette okay one ml plasma we have to leave behind and then we have yes. to resuspend uh, then you have to resuspend and after resuspension you do the three cycles so of resuspension sorry in which fluid we have to resuspend same plasma remaining plasma okay plasma is the vehicle here sir can uh, you share your number i think pankaj sir will be able to give you sir could you share the video of freeze thaw how you do the freeze thaw okay freeze thaw it's very simple you just see you you see the bottom of this uh, tube here so you just have to dip yes. that bottom in the uh, in the liquid nitrogen in container and that's it it will freeze within 10 seconds okay and for thaw just remove it outside and keep for just some time just remove and then you can just roll it in the palm and if you have time you can just leave it on the on the table in the laminar okay. flow okay so just put it in the incubator bag 37 degrees or just the palm yeah, yeah you can put it in the test tube warmer also Okay, answer so this freezing requires how much? I think we'll stop here. I think we'll stop here. We'll stop here. It's very late, and uh, yeah. these things will be will be taught uh, hands on. You all do when you come to Delhi. So you can stop uh, sharing your screen, and uh, thank you so much. So much of interest, and I think the future uh, belongs to PRP. I'm sure of that. <laughs> so PRP. There is a wonderful lecture for PRP. Can you share the search number? Yeah, I will do that. Will do. That. so what we do is you can please unshare your screen sir uh, uh, unshare kar sakte hain you can unshare your screen it's not going for unshare i am seeing only say sharing okay stop share stop share ha first class so thank you so much it was a very wonderful so it's really i i thought in the night at around 11 ish that why not call you And since you are yeah, making it was, a lot, it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile that you came and thank you very so much. Much to learn from the horse's mouth. You are the one who has uh, made this media. Thank you so much. So we'll be putting your number, and they can always contact you. And of course, thanks for honoring us because uh, I wanted this thing to be done by you. Thank you so much, sir. And for thank everyone here, yeah, when you come thank to Delhi for hands-on, आप लोग करते हैं. We'll be giving you these medias, and normally I'll give you my blood, 30 ml, and. Uh, <laughs> तो करते ही हम करेंगे आपको अच्छे से करेंगे बहुत सिंपल होता है डिफिकल्ट नहीं होता है विल टीच यू विल टीच यू हाउ टू डू इट डोंट वरी एट ऑल एंड मीनल गिव द नंबर आल्सो एंड बाय हेयर आई लाइक टू टेल यू वन थिंग दैट देयर इज नो कमर्शियल एग्रीमेंट मी विद बिटवीन मी एंड क्रायोसेल आई हैव कॉल्ड डॉक्टर सुरेका बिकॉज़ ही इज अ ही इज अ गाय हु डेवलप्ड द किट बट देयर इज नो बट नो मींस आई हैव एनी साइंटिफिक और कोलैबोरेशन विद देम फाइन so this was the one thing i want to put make very clear here but we'll give you the number also so uh, thank you so much there have been lot of lots and lots of queries you have our numbers i am sure you have our numbers by now uh, numbers uh, in case you ever need any help you can contact us and uh, all the messages which you have sent you can send sending you can put them in the group where you are enrolled we have a group where you are enrolled and we'll take your queries there so it's pretty late thank you so much the time for you already missed your breakfast no time for your lunch have a wonderful afternoon wonderful day wonderful weeks ahead and uh, please stay safe and take care of your health stay safe this virus is not a very good virus to have i have been through it in the end say something agriti you can and uh, please go to the linkedin and download yes. your volume we we have created this site on linkedin yeah agriti will submit up thank you so much uh the volume is available in linkedin profile so just go and uh, download download it and you will definitely be uh, benefited by reading it uh so i'm requesting here and uh, i just want to say uh, goodbye to everybody and uh, we will be uh, available on next sunday with a new topic of curtain razor and a new resonance volume so it is time to say goodbye uh Goodbye everyone and stay safe